everyone. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. Hey, Don, I did not realize. I thought I had more time to get ready and I just rushed to get ready, but I'm here and I'm pulling up all of your questions. So if you want to go ahead and start chatting, ask whatever questions you have um, about anything Amazon can be Q4 or just something that's been going on. Um, I have a couple of things that I've noticed been going on just within the community and my Facebook groups. Um, so I will touch on some of that. If I forget to remind me, um, but I can see you in the chat. So Dawn is here and she's in the groups. Um, first things first, we have a Your Selling Guide meetup happening in Las Vegas on November 9th. So I'm sure you've heard me talk about it and you'll hear about me talk about it a little bit more. Um, it's Thursday the 9th. It is at the Mandalay Bay. It's at Rira. Irish pub. I don't know how to say it, so I do it like that. Um, and it's in the Mandalay Bay shops from 6 to 9. You can get your tickets at yoursellingguide.com slash meetup. And it's going to be a great time. We have a good group of people already. We already have a Facebook chat in Messenger. So if once you get your ticket, you'll get the link to join the chat. Um, people are talking about where they're going to stay. So if you come to the meetup and you meet someone on Thursday and you're staying in this for the weekend, you guys can hang out on Friday if you make a connection. Talking to other sellers is so important and it's one of those things that's kind of like selling on Amazon. Once you start doing it, you're like, oh my gosh, like it makes so much sense. That's like talking to other sellers. So if you're not in a community where you're talking to other sellers, you're not knowing what you're missing out on basically but you learn things just by chatting that you never would have thought of or known to look for and so i definitely think since this meetup is like the first week of november maybe technically the second week we're going to be talking about a lot of different things about what we're selling all that kind of stuff so definitely join it if you can it's a business expense your travel and the Grocery Outlet in Las Vegas recently opened. So if you haven't checked out Grocery Outlet, definitely stop by there. I know Becky said she's getting a rental car and she is going to stop at Grocery Outlet just to see what all the fuss is about. Um, but yeah, so Vegas hotels are cheap. We didn't get like a room right anywhere. You can pretty much stay anywhere pretty cheap. It's like up to you. But the actual event will be at the Mandalay Bay. Um, a couple of us are staying throughout the strip. So yeah. If you are coming and you're in town beforehand, we might do something the night before. It's just kind of how we always do, like an impromptu if you want to come meet all that. That part's TBD, but we'll definitely let you know. Um, so we got Alejandra, Stacy, Terry. Hey, Terry. Um, Terry's podcast. Oh, that was my another announcement. If you didn't know, because apparently I don't think a lot of people know, I have a podcast. So there are currently uh 30 the 30, 37th episode i think drops this week it has caitlin um on instagram her name is let's go kate c-a-i-t and she actually so she's been selling on amazon for a while but she grew her business just this year to five figure profit months and she tells you how she did it and pretty much it's not it's not like a big thing and again how she did it is she found out about it by talking to other sellers on Instagram. So definitely want to check it out. Um, there's podcasts around Q4. Terry, who I just put she was in, I think last week or the week before, it was her podcast episode about how she got started and she's a veteran. So that was a really fun episode. So definitely check it out. You're selling podcasts on YouTube or you can listen to it wherever you listen to podcasts. And you are welcome to be on the podcast because again, I think hearing from other sellers is so important. So definitely join and email me if you want to be on the podcast. No seller is too big or too small. I would love to chat with you. We have Ronnie, we have Marianne, Brenda, Nadia, Anastasia here in the chat. So you guys are welcome to ask any questions. I do have some questions from the um chat or the text so if you didn't know i have a texting feature where you can actually text me i'll talk a little bit more about it in a little bit but these questions are all coming from people who have texted me throughout the day so we have jessica l asks what's the longest time you've ever had to sit on a product in a warehouse 
And do you ever get nervous about them not selling? I'm curious how long your items take to sell after they were received. So kind of a two part. So first part is most of my stuff, I would say about 75% of the stuff sells within the first six weeks. Like some of the stuff, you know this, when you get a real good item, it'll sell like while it's sitting in your driveway waiting for UPS to come pick it up. But most of the stuff um, will sell within the first six weeks. Some of the other stuff, I've had stuff in the warehouse for probably six months or a little even more. I talk about it in upcoming videos about my Black Friday items to be aware of or beware. And it just sometimes bad buys if you don't notice that they're bad or you're not totally keeping track of your all your products like I am, especially when you have a lot of products, you don't necessarily always notice the bad ones. And so some of those, they get stuck in the warehouse for, I don't think I've had anything for a year, but I'm pretty sure I'm getting close on some of them. And yeah, so most of the stuff sells pretty fast, but I like, if it hasn't sold after three months, personally, I like to start pricing to move or making a decision or asking for it back. And you can like FBM it at that point. Um, let's see. Alicia. When you send an item that is over a hundred dollars, do you add signature confirmation? I do anything. Uh, I don't even probably hundred. I don't think I've ever done like a hundred dollar items. I think they've been like really cheap, like sixty dollars or whatever. Or they are like um, two hundred fifty to I, that one I sold, which was twelve hundred dollars. So those ones for sure. I do signature delivery, and actually two of those. I don't know if I mentioned this in the video where I told you what the item was, but two of them i sold like seven or eight total of that 1200 hundred dollar product two of them i got like a couple months later from amazon it they like basically want to confirm because what happens is the buyer will claim it's fraud on their credit card and so amazon comes back to you and they want to know the tracking the date you sent it and you just fill out the information it's very basic you're like you could see it in my own account so why don't you just grab it yourself but they just want that information and then I, I they never took back my money so amazon must have won that case because it was signature it was signed for so anything of high value you definitely want to do that signature confirmation it's relatively inexpensive in the grand scheme of things it does add some cost to your shipping and you can tell by checking it on or off um i think i'm not 100 because i again i don't do this but i think you sps post office they have like a uh they're you're covered under till a certain amount or something um, but I usually do add the signature confirmation on anything high value. I also take photos. I take photos of it sealed. I take photo of it in the box. I take a photo of it with the shipping label on the box. I take a lot of photos because I don't want to, you know, people are crazy and I don't want, I want to have everything on my end covered. So I definitely would recommend doing anything you can to cover yourself. Um, Vera L. Has a couple different questions. So what first was how do you deal with the emails from Amazon that tell you your offer is not eligible for future price because of the price or whatever? I ignore those. There's probably a way in notifications to turn them off. Do not you do not have to match that price. Most of the time it's too low. Amazon's looking out for their customers and not you know our profit. So I ignore those emails completely. You don't, you are actually eligible for the buy box, even though they pretend that you're not. In fact, even the, they've recently changed how those um, secondary emails, they, they say like a customer wants to know something about a product and it's the product page questions. So somebody on Amazon, a customer has asked a, a question about the product. And now the way Amazon's emailing us, it's like, Oh, customers awaiting response. You need to respond within 24 hours or something. You do not need to respond to those. Um, most of the time we don't have enough stock to like, or we don't know, like they'll be asking different questions like what's the expiration date or can you, one uh, one was a weird one, something about a doll. I don't know, but it was like, some of the questions are comical, but again, I've never responded to those. If no one responds, none of the sellers on the page respond, that question won't be posted onto the page. But if you respond, then your response will be posted on it. Um, but yeah, you get some crazy questions. So I ignore those. I ignore most of the emails Amazon sends because they're just basically spam. Um, they're also asked, if you're selling food items, FBM, what's the latest expiration date you can mail? So Amazon's policy is 
90 days. Um, I always do 120 days out for either one. So FBM specifically, you can do a little bit shorter because as long as the customer can feasibly use it. So if it's 180 day vitamins, you need it to be at least 180 days, right? They're not going to be able to use the product in time. If it's a hostess cupcake, which they say lasts forever, but if you look at the box, they have really close expiration dates. As long as they can use it and eat it, like if like they're probably going to eat that pretty fast, right? So um, the way I always look at it is, will the customer be upset if they see that the expiration date is whatever it is. If I think the customer will be upset if they see it, I do not sell it. So it comes down to your personal call, but those are the guidelines I use personally. Okay, going through your comments now. Um, Ronnie asked, how do you get ungated in Bath and Body Works since they don't do invoices? Um, I don't know. I don't really sell them. I will say that if you are selling the body shop, they last week or the week before rolled out ips a bunch of members of my community got them so i would pull your listings if it was me i don't have any but if it was me i would be pulling my listings because if you have like five body shop uh the body shop listings you'll get five ips and i just have been acknowledging them and they come off of your account within minutes uh if you don't have that acknowledge button then you have to do a plan of action but just be aware that the body shop recently started rolling out ips Um, Colorado Motorsports. Hello, Nikki. Do you know how to do FBM shipping in Seller Board? Okay, so one of the cool things about Seller Board is that the shipping cost pulls in there automatically. I have emailed them because, and a lot of people in my group have too, made tickets with them, and they said they're working on fixing it or, or getting it better, but basically it pulls the data from Amazon, from some whatever feed. And so Amazon's feed doesn't always update it. So typically they were there within 24 hours. They told me it could be up to a week now, but I've been seeing them there within 48 hours of shipping. So it's all about when, when Amazon, I guess, sends that data over to them, but it, it will show up there eventually. So if you sold some stuff last week and you look in there, you'll see the FBM shipping costs right in there, which for me is huge because it's how I know if I want to keep selling that item, right? If I want to keep replanning you can get a better picture with amazon you have to kind of do math and like pull the report and say okay but i did this and then i made that and that's how much it costs but i love seller board for that reason um let's see brenda asked do you always price your items at the current sales price it's selling I always price my items a dollar or two above when I send them in, sometimes even higher now, because um, in case they sell out, then my and then I won't be the one like paying the price, right? If the next price is higher. So that's how I've always done it and that's how I still do it. After everything's settled into the warehouse and it's available, not just transferring around, but available, that's when I start to look at my pricing. I have a video, I know I've got a couple about pricing strategies and how I do it. That is my best advice is to price it high and then wait for it to settle and become actually available before you look into pricing or dropping the price or matching the whatever buy box is. One other thing, because my um, sales have kind of slowed because I do still have some costumes, but they're just the Doug costumes, which I don't think, I think I'm gonna end up returning them. Um, but anytime, so like you might notice it right now, if you have a lot of Halloween stuff that was selling, now that we've gotten into that week before where it's harder uh, to get in time with shipping and everything, people start to go in store for their purchases. So you'll see it again uh, around Christmas time that like week before Christmas, your sales might start to slow a little bit if you have mostly holiday specific items because it becomes that little bit of a lull. Even after shopping holidays, I'm sure you've noticed it throughout the year. If there's a shopping holiday like or there's shopping holidays and then there's holiday holidays. So like a Memorial Day weekend, sales typically are slow because people are out doing stuff, not necessarily shopping online. Where if you have a shopping holiday, so like the Prime Days, for example, um, 
those holidays, you'll have really good sales and then you'll see like a little bit of a lull because everyone's just done all their shopping. So there'll be a little bit of a lull before they go, oh yeah, I need to get that too. It just kind of happens. So definitely if you're noticing that with your sales right now, you're not alone. Mine, I have been having like $800 days, $1,000 days. I think I had like one almost uh, 1000 or $1,500 day. And then right now I'm at like $500 day. So it's like a lull compared to where I was at. Uh, let's see. Martha, what kind of items should we be looking out for to prep for Christmas? What would you say your most profitable categories are? Should we buy stuff that's not as profitable now and hold till we get to the closer holiday? So for Christmas, I'm not kidding you when I tell you that everything sells. Like, okay, I'm not every, I just told you about the bad buys from Black Friday. So not everything will sell, but almost everything will sell. So you just want to have as much stock as you can. People are buying coffee. They're buying baking stuff. They're buying socks, shoes, shirts, sports bras. They're buying all kinds of stuff for gifts for themselves. We're caught, this is like a spending season where Americans just spend so much money during this next two months. So you want to have as much stuff as you can. And it doesn't need to be Christmas specific. I would recommend you don't go deep under Christmas specific stuff. Like you can buy it and sell it, but just be careful. Like don't go all in on Christmas. Be sure you have a nice assortment of different things. Don't go all in on toys. Make sure you have a nice assortment of different housewares. As you know it's a good time when um, the Walmart aisles start to get all their baking stuff. Like I just saw like pallets of, uh, what's it called? Stuffing and corn and like all kinds of stuff's coming out because it's baking season. If Walmart knows it, you know it's baking season, right? So that all that kind of stuff will be coming out. So for Christmas items specifically, if it's not profitable now, I don't think it's going to get better. Um, there may be a few hot items that do, but usually it's more profitable now than it will be the closer we get because price taking will start to happen and people will lower the prices. So I would watch it. Like I have a list of toys that every time I see them, I am scanning to see if they're hot or not. You don't really know because we don't know how much of a toy that the manufacturers made. So if they didn't make enough and it takes off as high demand for whatever reason, then it's going to get harder to find. So Look for the shelves that have empty um, things. Read what the tag says it is and just be aware of what's going on with the toys and which ones are going to end up being hot. Um, I, like I said, I have a list. I scan them when I see them like furry, not furry, Furby. I scanned it a, couple, a month or two ago, um, but they still are always on shelf and they are still $69 because Amazon sells them too. And so it doesn't look like it's going to be hot, but I don't know. So I'm just going to keep scanning it. Um, and then she, Martha also asked, what date should you cut off shipping for Amazon FBA for the holidays? December 1st. So that is only Christmas specific stuff. Every Don't stop sending your shipments in because uh, January is just as profitable as November and October. So don't stop sending stuff in. But if you have Christmas specific, you want to FBM it after December 1st, which Ashley had another question about um, FBM. So she says, when it comes to Q4 and FBM products, would it be a good idea to ship inventory in a Walmart box? So what I've heard, I've never had it happen, but what I've heard is if you send something in a Walmart box, and I'm talking like a Walmart OA, uh, like if you buy something on walmart.com, you know, it comes in a blue box. Or if you, you know, the Walmart boxes we use for our FBA shipments that say Walmart all big all over them. If you use those boxes and a customer should contact Amazon and say just offhand that the product arrived in a Walmart box, you could get deactivated for drop shipping, which is not allowed on Amazon. So that's why you shouldn't. But those other ones, they're called pen and gear. They're at Walmart. They're like cardboard boxes, pretty much uh, blank boxes, but they say Walmart like dot com on the bottom, you can fold it in a way where you can't see it anyways. But those I've been using for years, there's not a problem, but it's just in the off chance. So anytime you FBM anything, you should always use a nice clean box. Don't reuse. I, I think some people reuse Amazon shipping boxes. I don't like to, I want it to be clean. And that's just me personally, but just you want it to be clean, nice new box and make sure it doesn't have, um, 
any other stores on it because you could just accidentally get shut down and you don't want that during Q4. Um, okay, so real quick, Tanya V said, I asked a question on one of your YouTube videos and I got a WhatsApp number saying that it was you and then they started to text them. I do not use WhatsApp. There is, I can't even, it's like whack-a-mole. I've stopped like posting about it, but I will just share it here because I, you can text me now, but it is not on WhatsApp. It's in your regular texting messengers. People will steal my photo and then they robo comment like, and if you read them, I mean, it doesn't sound like how I would talk anyways. And it's got my photo. It's got my name spelled all wrong. And it'll say like, what's, it doesn't even have my name. I think it just says WhatsApp with crazy numbers with circles on them. That is not me. And if I see it, I always block them and then they'll go away. Like they'll be blocked, but then they pop up again. So I do not have currently any one-on-one -on -one mentorships that I offer. I don't have WhatsApp. I only talk to you through YouTube. And if you click on my name with my photo, it will take you to my channel. If you click on theirs, it goes to a fake channel. So um, just be careful because I know one it happened a, a year ago. Someone was saying like, um, I think they caught on to it when they asked for their social. You guys, these people are trying to scam you and I don't control it. YouTube allows them to robobot hundreds of comments in the matter of minutes. And so I can't do anything about it. So you gotta be aware online that if you click on my name, it'll take you to my profile, that is me. If I don't ever say like, for enlightenment, text me, okay? That's not me, that's someone else. So um, all that to say, you can text me. So the number is, here I'll type it so I can put it on there, 503-461-5555. So you can text me at that number and it'll, it'll like add yourself to my contact and all that. If you, you can text me questions anytime. Like I said, I've been getting questions from the texting app to do in this live. Um, you will, there's something special going on this weekend, which you'll be the first to know about. I will text it out on Thursday. And then there's also, I put together a freebie for you about FBM specifically. So if you text me to that number, this hashtag, Hashtag FBM returns. Let me put it on the screen. You text me that number to 503-461-5985 and you'll get a PDF of all of my common responses to um, FBM customer returns since we're talking FBM. Okay, so the, I wanna return my product. It's a, I have the, template that says, we're sorry, you're unhappy with your product, you're free to return an original condition, or we'll charge a restocking fee. So I use that one all the time. It also has if you send a product using Amazon's, um, these only work if you're using Amazon shipping labels. So you're buying your shipping through Amazon. You can send there's one for if the package got lost, it happens a lot during Q4. I don't know if it's porch pirates or stuff just doesn't get delivered. But it's a one that says we're so sorry, it didn't arrive to you. Here's your options. And it, it works all the time. And then there's also one for so there's one for UPS, there's one for USPS. And then if Amazon refunds your customer, and they shouldn't have because you bought the shipping through Amazon, and you have that protection, there's another template that tells you how to get your that tells you how to break it down to Amazon back, like make a case for them. No, this actually is covered by you. So you need to refund me X, Y, Z. Those templates will get uh, texted right over to you. It's a PDF. It's like two pages. So if you text me that, you will get it right away back to you. Um, yeah. I am from Oregon. <laughs> I just haven't lived there in since like 2005, I think. But I'm originally from Oregon. Oh, yeah, I'm going through your comments now. So if you had a question, drop it in the chat. Okay, Mariana said, why is getting on gated so hard? Um, I don't know if they 
did a crackdown again or what, but one of the things that I mentioned, I was going to tell you what's been going on in the group. So people, and I don't, there's no rhyme or reason to it, have been getting suddenly regated in a lot of stuff. And sometimes it's a glitch and it'll go back in a day or two to you being able to sell again. And sometimes it's not. And I, I haven't been able to figure out because from my reading, they're not all new sellers. It's like some people have been selling for a while. So I don't understand what's going on with that. My best piece of advice if that happens to you would be to pick one um, thing you've been ungated in and then call Amazon. I feel like you get way better help if you actually call them versus opening the email ticket and ask them, hey, I was approved to sell this on this date. Here's the number or whatever, because you can see it in your selling applications and ask them why you've been regated now and see what they say. As far as why it's hard now, they recently, uh, not recently, maybe in like July, started to crack down and they're, they're very, they are taking a lot longer to respond. Sometimes you could get approved like basically in minutes. They're taking longer like weeks at a time now to approve you or not. Um, I would just wait it out. You could close it entirely and start over if you're really impatient and open a new case with your invoice. But yeah, I don't, they, it ebbs and flows. Sometimes the gates are open and everyone can submit anything and get approved. And now they've cracked back down. Tanya says, I was approved for Neutrogena. Hasn't gotten the approval, but it's letting her sell. So, yeah, there's something weird going on. Angie asked, what can we sell that's profitable this Q4 for new and gated in most categories? Um, like, so... I'm guessing that groceries gated now for new sellers. Sometimes it's not, but like home products, kitchen products, uh, you might be able to sell different like appliances. I would go down the Walmart clearance aisle. And I say this because you could pick any clearance aisle, but Walmart, because they have so many different categories in one aisle, it just makes it easier and you'll be able to see what you can sell. So uh, arts and crafts, I remember, I think it was two years ago now, a new seller was killing it with the arts and crafts and she was gated in a lot of stuff, but she was selling like the tie dye, make your own tie dye shirt kits. And she did really great at those. So there are things out there. You just have to figure out what you can sell. If you can get ungated in grocery and topical, that was another question someone had. Um, let me see whose name it was. Alicia M asked what category sell most in Q4 and if you can get a gated one, what would it be? Grocery and topical, which is the beauty category, will always be my number ones that I recommend starting out with because you can find a lot of profit out there in those two categories year round, but especially now with the baking. Can you tell I like baking and like selling baking stuff? Um, let's see. So as far as the categories, I can't remember. I meant to look this up before, but I did it in one of my videos for Q4, I think. But I sold a lot of beauty stuff last year. And I sold, I do a lot of toys. Don't go too deep. I have other videos that say don't go too deep because then I show you how much money I lost. But yeah. Okay. Athena, for missing items in my shipment, what do I need to provide? We covered this on one of our la my last Hangouts in the Q4 group because... Amazon is getting very, very hard to fight on missing things. So if you're missing a whole box, I would fight it. If you're missing a couple of items, it's probably not worth your pain and suffering to try and fight them on it because they will just tell you, I mean, you, I'm sure you've seen it. They will tell you, no, you didn't send it. So what, um, what people said in the, hang out which is what i'm going to end up doing is taking photos of your shipments and it's i know it's really tedious actually becky um was recommending setting up a gopro and just filming i think it was becky filming you adding the stuff to the box and when i get into that warehouse i am 100 percent going to do that just have a gopro we have a bunch of gopros here on a tripod it's like set up ready to go when i pack my shipments because you can send, you can send your receipts, but they will give you 
a really hard time now. It used to be a lot easier. I don't know why. I have my suspicions of why. I think it comes down to bad sellers, but they're very really difficult to deal with now there are services out there i don't currently use one and i can't remember the names of them that can help you get your stuff back but or money back they'll fight it for you um which could be a good option to go with because they take a percentage i think it is uh which it's if they're doing that for you and you don't have to deal with that 20 percent might be worth it for you to just get money back for them um but yeah taking and then if you use inventory lab and I, it maybe there's a way to do it on Amazon too, seller central, but you can print out like a packing list and then other members said that they're literally signing them. And so if you sign it and like, say like, that's a little, like the more on top of your stuff you are, the, the more Amazon's not going to fight back with you as much. Um, so that is something I would look into too. I've said this before and I use this, this will be my second Q4 doing it or no, my third. I've been using the where you pay Amazon the manual processing fee. All it is, I'm still prepping my stuff. I'm still labeling my stuff. All it is, is I am paying Amazon to not tell them what's in every single box. You know, when you fill out those Excel sheets or you do the list of like three in this box, two in this box, these are expiration dates. I pay Amazon 15 cents an item. It's going to go, I think, to 30 if it hasn't already because of Q4. Um, I think of it as I don't have anyone I pay that helps me prep. So that's like basically pain. They do not lose my stuff. Knock on wood. They have, they've actually been, I send five. They say I sent seven. They, they've been finding more of my stuff. Since I've been doing that, they've not had anything go really, really lost. So I don't know if that is something also. Um, but it is an added expense. So I hesitate to say to do it unless you're like me and it can, it saves me like two to three hours on my shipment. So for me, it's worth it. Um, okay. Back to your comments. I think I scrolled back too far. Kayla asks, do I need to pack FBM with special sold and set? Nope. I do poly bag everything for my FBM because I live off of dirty, dusty dirt roads. So if I don't poly bag stuff, even when it's leaving here, it'll get dusty. But especially if they also live in dusty, dirty dirt roads, their stuff is going to arrive dirty inside the box. So I poly bag everything. I sometimes will put FN SKU labels on it also if I need to cover something up or like, you know, like one of my, um, so I do have a label helper and sometimes he rips the labels off of stuff and like the label comes with it. And so I'll put an F N SKU label over it to kind of hide it. Um, but yeah, so that anything I can do that helps the stuff, but I poly bag everything. Colorado Motorsports said, I do the same thing. Put F, put stuff in a poly bag and a poly mailer. So all my costumes I've been sending out, I've been poly bagging and then poly mailing them because you just want it to look nice and professional for the customers. Um, Agnes asks, I've been getting the price alerts even when my price is a dollar above the buy box. So if you have it in FBA, it's harder to do this, but um, if I have it listed FBM, I'll just delete the whole listing and redo it. And sometimes that works around. Sometimes if it's FBA, you just have to set your min and max. Min and max. You can always reach out to Amazon for anything. Any questions you have, you can reach out to them. You may not get a helpful answer. You most likely, 80% won't get a helpful answer, but I'd be able to. Hi, Yolanda. Yolanda is coming to the meetup. Um, let's see. So, have you ever purchased items from competitors to sell it? No, and I would not recommend that you do either because you could get your account shut down. So, I, there's, I mean, if, if you see someone doing that to you, there's a way to report it to Amazon and I would do that, but I would never, ever, ever do that to someone else because it's just not worth it. You're not really, it's, it's not a competition. Everyone thinks it is. It's not a competition. We all will win the buy box. We will all rotate through. Your stuff will sell just as, like everyone else's. Sometimes it feels like they favor different sellers and maybe they do for reasons we don't know, but I don't necessarily look at it as a competition because you can get um the buy box just like everyone else i 
ATL asked, I couldn't find any profitable items around my area when I scanned Toys R Us. Are you in Canada? I did hear they're coming back. When I scanned the item, the price mostly cheaper on Amazon. So this was another question someone had texted me. I didn't add it to my um, thing though, but it's a mentality shift. So if I scan something, it doesn't make money. I don't sit there and get so mad that Walmart or F uh, Marshalls is charging too much and I can't make money. I put it on the shelf and I scan something else. There is so much product out there that does make money that it's just you have to shift your mentality to don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Scan something else. So if you're having a hard time, branch out into other things and just keep scanning. It is hard when you're first starting and there's no it's it's not good advice to hear. I understand. But there is no better advice than to just scan, 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 scan everything because you'll find your groove. You'll find what you like to scan. You'll find what makes money for you. Even as a new seller, like I was saying, that Walmart clearance aisle, you'll find what you can sell and what you can't sell and just keep scanning. Um, sometimes it's harder than other times. Even for me still, I'll like text Becky and I'll be like, oh my gosh, like what was it when inflation like last or either earlier this year or last late last year, I was like, okay, these inflation prices are really killing us because everything went up at retail and then it's still low on Amazon. So you can get frustrated, but you got to keep moving on and scan other things. There's plenty out there that you can sell. I promise that will make money. You just got to keep scanning until you find it. Errol, where a good place for FBM boxes? So Walmart, like I said, the smaller mailing boxes, they have like a 12 by 15 by 10, and then they go all the way down to 6 by 6 by 6. I ordered mine off of Uline. So if I find a product, like I just found a new toy that I'm selling, and it's kind of a odd shape. I don't really have a box that fits it. So I'll just order a box from Uline that fits it. And then they you do have to order in 25. The Boxery is another place or Granger. If you have a Granger near you, you can order online and pick up there. Um, Uline, I think, used to offer if you have a Uline warehouse near you. But I don't know if they still offer that, like, where you can go pick it up. But, yeah, those are what I would do. If actually just google like cardboard store or something near you you might have one near you like an off brand that has good prices that you can just go get the cardboard boxes that you need there heather b asked do you compete with amazon on fbm when they are sold out and holding the buy box so this is a thing that happens with new toys or hot toys or toys that technically release in a couple weeks or something amazon will hold the buy they'll give themselves the buy box even like i sold some um even while amazon was on the buy box i bought them from a distributor because i planned to make bundles with them but i hadn't made bundles with them so i just listed them fbm as like themselves and um amazon was saying this was a while ago now but amazon was saying they weren't going to ship till like november but I had nine available now. And so I was winning the buy box for like, I don't know, let's say Amazon has them for $20. I was selling mine for 40 and people were buying them because they could get them faster. So I'd have to look into the Keepa charts to really see like if Amazon shares the buy box or you could just listen to FBM and see if they're going to share. Um, I now, instead of saying, I used to say, if you watched my earlier videos that I don't compete with Amazon, I will if Keepa is telling me that they share the buy box. If Keepa is telling me they do not share, I'm not going to try and compete with them. So the same thing would go if they are hold, sold out but holding the buy box for themselves. Uh, okay, back to your questions. Rob, I've been playing with the dreaded or account does not qualify. I need Are you saying that is account health or you can't sell products? So if you want to let me know more about that, I will look for your comment. Okay.
Is there products brands that Amazon will never let you sell? Um, I don't. I mean, there's products you can't like LOL dolls is the perfect example. When you try to apply, like you can go to one now, it'll say we're not accepting applications. I don't try to sell any electronics. That is too much IP theft. Like if you don't, you don't know where your liquidator got it. If there's no paper trail from that liquidator from where they got it, you could get shut down. If you said you got it from your liquidator and they bought stolen goods, that's a thing that happened this year, I guess. So I don't sell electronics for a whole variety of reasons. And that's just some of them. They have a lot of IPs. Um, some brands are super gated, like you can't sell them or you'd have to get an invoice and it'd be like almost impossible to get an invoice. Um, so you'll learn as you're going, most things you can find at retail and want to sell that make profit, you can get ungated in. Um, let's see. My shipment has been at Amazon for a month now and they're still not done. This is why I want to FBM for the holidays. Yes. So some warehouses will start to get backed up and you'll know it like they they know theirs is. You'll start to notice it. So you'll want to definitely FBM. One of the things about FBM versus FBA. So if you can send it in. So right now I would be sending everything you can, possibly can FBA. They still get a little bit more priority over the buy box. So I have had some stuff that I've been selling occasionally FBM and as soon as I put it in the my next shipment it will sell so much faster so there's that aspect of it but when you get a backed up warehouse a warehouse that keeps losing your shipments or it's just cut off time for holiday you're going to want to FBM so that's why I really have been driving at home hopefully the last couple of months that you're going to want to FBM it's not scary I promise those shipping templates are not scary. If you watch my video and you literally just copy that free one, I promise you'll be good to go um, as long as you're buffering in the shipping price because your free shipping is not free. You have to pay for that shipping label even though the customer doesn't. But if I've been sending stuff out up to like five pounds with the ground advantage, it's still only like 10 to $13 to ship. So if you're buffering that price in, um, and not only that, people are paying. So I've had people pay 20 $25 for costumes to get expedited. Um, so it definitely, you can get more profit on something. I mean, I don't try to make money on the shipping, but sometimes it works out where I make money on the shipping. So definitely you'll notice if your warehouse. A lot of people talking about Kohl's. So I have on gaming guides, they're actual invoices from distributors they are tried and true they work um yes it's not as easy as ordering something from kohl's but you guys that was never a way that you could do it anyways and they are no longer accepting them so just i, I don't know what to tell you take that for what you want um if you try to alter an invoice or a receipt or whatever and amazon will get you shut down I've had people in the community who have done that also. So just be very careful with your account. It's not the time to be messing or doing anything risky with your account. Uh, Angela asked, do you have to ship shipping templates for FBA? No, you do not. When you FBM, is it advisable to add charge shipping fees? You can if you, it's up to you. I know Becky charges, um, Becky Silman, if you're in my groups, she charges shipping for her FBM stuff and it sells fine. I, if, I, I, I mean, I probably could. I'm just of the mentality that I won't buy stuff if I have to pay for shipping or if, that, if I really need it. So I like to offer free shipping. If you buffer in five to $6 on stuff, you should be good. Like, so if you're buying something, and you uh, see it makes $10 profit, but you have to, and that's after your cost of goods, but you're gonna have to buy $5 shipping. Now you only make $5. So just make sure you're calculating that in. Most people have the shipping credit gone from their account, but not everyone. Also, Amazon rolled out some ugly new profit calculator that some people have. I don't have it yet, but a lot of people in the groups already have it. Um, it's pretty big and ugly. So they're rolling out the stuff in the app to some people and not everyone, and I don't know why. Gertrude, should 
FBM match the buy box. Yeah. I mean, I, that's like, that's, yeah, I do with mine. Um, I think some sellers try to like undercut it or they'll undercut it, but then charge shipping, which makes it the same price. Um, in that case, if I was a customer, I'd be buying the one that has free shipping, but it just, it depends. So you can try it both ways. You can have multiple shipping templates. You can have up to 20. So you can have some that charge for shipping and some that don't, and you can change them at any time in your managed inventory too. You can just change the shipping template that was on it. Jimmy. I'm having a super hard time with money management. Have you start with, okay, so I think I started with $500, I think maybe 750, I can't remember. I have to read my blog post where I wrote about it. So you can start with whatever money you want. It's just going to take longer to snowball into more money. So you've spent, I actually did a video um, not that long ago where it was like a 12, 16 week challenge, 12 week challenge. And I had a hundred dollars a week to spend and I track it over time, like how much, uh, what I bought and how much profit I made on it. So that would be a good video to really, where I will break it down a lot better than I'm going to right here. But you basically will buy the $500 worth of inventory. You'll send it in. It is going to sell, but it's going to take a while to sell. Even if it sells all of in two weeks and you got a really hot product, you're not going to get that money back for six weeks from Amazon because of all the different processing and, uh, it's just how Amazon works. It takes four to six weeks before you ever see your first payout. Then when you get that money back, you buy more inventory with, you know, your profit. You keep rolling it into more and build up. So I started with 750 I think. I started in August, late August 2017, and I was pulling out profit basically January 1st. I had like $5,000 profit that I pulled out to pay myself. I did not pull out any profit from my business in that in between. I did pull out in November to pay back my initial startup cost, which was, I think, $2,000 at that point with the trainings and the cost of goods and um, supplies and everything. But you can do it. Um, if you are going to start selling on Amazon, if you're not yet, it is not get rich quick. It's not really get rich ever. It takes a long time. It's a great time to sell because everything sells right now. It'll be a lot easier than if you start in like February. But it's going to take some time. So do not, if you need to pay your bills, you got to get another job to pay your bills in the interim because it's not going to get you money quickly. But you can build a business that will work for you and work for you long term. But it's definitely a marathon, not a sprint. How can you use Keepa to see if Amazon shares the buy box? So um, it went on the desktop version, if you have it where it's a Chrome and it will add the uh, chart to Amazon, you go to data and then buy box statistics. If you're looking on the app on the bottom, when you've pulled up an ASIN, scroll over to buy box on the bottom and it'll tell you there. If Amazon wins the buy box 100% of the time, they don't share the buy box. If they win it 98%, 85%, that means they will share the buy box. Um, I wouldn't go super deep on anything that they you're trying to, but if you want to test something out, you could test it out and see if they share it with you. Okay, Rob was trying to add a new product. That was why he's red. So the red bar just means you can't, it's it's very weird. So some of it's just gray and it says request approval. But if it's red, you can go to your Seller Central account, even on your phone, but on your web browser. And you can see if you can request approval. Sometimes you'll get auto approved even with the red bar. But most of the times they're going to ask for an invoice. It just means that that brand has restricted. I don't have, why is Seller Board better than Seller Toolkit? I don't know what Seller Toolkit is, so I can't answer that question. I like Seller Board because I can see on my phone how much profit I made that day. It shows you photos of every single thing you've sold that day, that month or whatever you can filter. And for me, I'm visual. So if I go sourcing, I didn't go source last week. If I go sourcing, you know, this week, um, I will be looking to see what I've been selling this month to see visually, okay, I need to get more of this, 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 and see how much profit I made. Because if I sold it, doesn't mean I made a profit. 
So I want to see, am I making profit? And so for me, seller board, plus it has, it does so much stuff. Um, so it will pull in like all your reporting. So you can do, pull reporting to see if Amazon owes you money for anything. Um, it does, if you make your own listings, you can solicit product page reviews, not seller reviews, but product page reviews so that your listing can get more reviews and thus have a better rank and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know what seller toolkit does, but I'll, I don't know if it does all that stuff. Normally the question is inventory lab versus that, and they do um, inventory, they do two completely different things. So that is why. Okay. Ashley M says, shipping has me so confused on my profit. I don't know how to keep track of the most efficient ways to ship and the estimate of what my actual profit will be. So I kind of touched on this. Um, I always say, if you're not sure, just list one. And when that one sells, you'll have a better picture. You'll know how much it costs to ship. You'll know um, how much money you made. But with the Amazon app, now that if you are lucky to have the shipping credit removed, you can get a way better picture of how much profit you're going to make. So you just have to factor in, I think $5, maybe now six since shipping costs are kind of going up for Q4. But if you can factor in $6 for your shipping costs, if the product weighs a pound or less, like under a pound is the best because like all these costumes I've been selling for like $60, $70, they're costing me four fifty to ship. So it's really one of those things that you kind of learn it as you go. I have a video where I tell you how to go through pirate ship so you can estimate the furthest place from you that you might possibly have to ship it to so if you're in florida maybe washington um state and then when you get that part of it you can say okay this might cost me 15 dollars to ship so i'm gonna charge 15 dollars or whatever on your thing um yeah um john um did you start using a repressor yes and i do not like it so i'm not going to recommend it the one i don't like is be cool um i unfortunately i think i've said this before i bought a year instead of buying it by the month so i am trying to make it work but i am not a fan it does some weird things do i have video on sales tax yes um, so in every state now, I have a couple different videos, so it depends what year it was, but now every state that does sales tax, Amazon does it on their own. You don't have to do anything. Amazon collects it from the customer and remits it to the state that it needs to go to. Um, I think all the major platforms do now because it's called the marketplace facilitator tax law. So you can Google it for your, um, state. So if you have a resale sales tax license where you don't have to pay for a sales tax when you go buy the stuff, you do still have to file your tax even though it's zero. If you're not sure how to do it for your state, I do not get into this because it's there's 50 states, they're all different, but you can actually call someone. Some states I've heard are harder to deal with than others, but for the most part, every time, and I've called a couple different states because over the years I've had these licenses in a couple different states. So you can call someone, it's usually a nice lady who will help you out and literally, I had to call because I literally couldn't figure out how to apply for it in Oklahoma. So I, she had to walk me through the website. And then um, some of them have a line for marketplace facilitators specifically. So you would put in your gross, your gross sales on total sales and then you again would put it in the marketplace facilitator. Sometimes you have to do it where it says um, non-taxable sales, whatever. It's super confusing. I would just call them if you have not done it, but definitely make sure, especially if you are in Florida with the sales tax certificate in Florida, they are the worst, I'm sorry. Um, they will charge you if you are a day late, you're gonna get a $50 fine plus interest on whatever that, if you owed a dollar, if you're at zero, they're gonna charge you the fine interest. It's insane. So make sure you're filing on time. If you have um, where you have to file every month, Again, call them and ask them how you get it changed. So mine was every month, but I called them and they said you have to physically write that you want it to be changed to annual. 
So I did. And then they said, we can't do annual, but we can do a semi-annual. So now I have to do it every six months, but it can be like easy to forget if you have to do it every month. So definitely check into that. And I recommend calling. I know it's like scary when you, cause you're thinking government and blah, blah, blah. It's big tape trying to get through, but they're actually really super helpful. Um, do I have a video on FBM from scratch? Um, I think I do. I think it's the FBM. I have like a couple and nothing has changed. So they should still all be relevant. I did one um, last year. This time it's FBM 101. I did another one more recently. But I think the one I did like from total scratch is maybe a year or two old. Do I have to cover the barcodes when shipping to customers? So for FBM, no, you don't have to cover the barcode. Um, Alicia, when Amazon loses your boxes, how do you keep up with and figure out all the receipts? Uh, usually, yeah, that's fun. Um, I, whatever, so if the shipment was last week, I would have all my receipts from last week. Like you just go by the date basically. So all my, sh all my receipts currently actually from the last two years are shoved in a box, like not even a big box. They're exploding out of the drawer. But, um, how I used to do it and how I need to do it is I would clip them by month. So everything I bought in October, everything I bought in September all together. So just go by what the date you sent it. Cause most likely you bought that stuff, right? That goes in that. That's how I do it. Uh, yes. Playa Craig. Have you ever got this error? Uh, it's the generic error. So uh, most people are making new listings now with the generic brand. And it's how I teach you to do it in my bundle 101 video, which means you're now probably coming across more listings um, that are generic branded. And there's an error on them. So it's it used to have numbers, but I don't think it does anymore. And you can try and open a ticket. Amazon will tell you what they need. I think they need photos of it. It's just more, usually I end up taking the stuff back. I've never gotten around it successfully. I know people who have, but you have to open a case with Amazon. Um, I just want to say this as someone who has made bundles and makes bundles, please don't take the price on these listings. So it could be my listing that you're going to hop on. So don't take the price on it. Like we're all selling it for that price. You don't need to undercut. I have had it happen on some of my bundles and it's incredibly frustrating. I took all the time to create this listing and now these other sellers are getting on it and taking the price. We would all be selling it for much higher because that's what it's selling for, especially more frustrating when I paid to advertise it, right? So just don't take the price. I can't not say it. <laughs> just just be aware. People's hard work into this. So we don't need to tank it. You don't need to drop the penny. Like we're all going to sell. Um, okay. Any last, I'm going to scroll back through your comments, but if you have any other last minute that I didn't ask, if you want to drop it again so it's fresh. Um, does... Account health affect your sales. Yes, but if your account is healthy, if it's, I think it's 200 is the minimum. So if you're at 219 or whatever, you're perfectly fine. If you get down to the lower one, they, it, the Amazon says it affects your buy box rotation. So that would mean, yes, it will affect your sales. But if you are, I think last I looked, I was 260. So it, you don't have to worry. I don't know why that graph is like this long and we're all over here. So just don't worry about it. As long as you are healthy, same with your IPI. As long as you are healthy, you are perfectly fine. It doesn't matter where you fall on the graph as long as it's in the healthy range. I think the IPI goes to one um, to 400. I think it's the lowest you can go. The FBM 101 video is super helpful. Thank you. That is an older one. So I'm glad it's still helpful. <laughs> Have you gotten boxes for FBM for your UPS? Yes. In fact, on my blog, uh, so yoursellingguide.com slash blog, I think it's a, two or three blogs ago, 
there's a step-by-step -step of how to open your free US UPS account, business account, and how to order the boxes. And it shows you the photos of which ones are the free ones. So definitely you can get your thermal printer labels from them for free. Sometimes if they don't show up online, just call after you've opened your account, call UPS and ask for them. Free boxes, you guys, they are worth it. So definitely get those. Um, someone mentioned there was padded envelopes and I placed an order for the one that I thought maybe was in they say express. So I can't use those. So just be aware. But it's the free security boxes. They're called security boxes. There's not a photo of them, but I show you what it looks like on my blog. And then the labels, you can get rolls or you can get flat fold. You can't get um, FN ski labels, though. So I have to buy those on Amazon. Oh, so, um, Ply Craig. So in my bundle video, um, which I filmed, I don't know, May maybe, it I, it doesn't have what it has now. So now when you make a new product, it actually has AI. So it will help you do all the bullet points for you. So that's a cool thing. But yes, when it's saying add a product, like um, you usually want to do if it's never been sold. It's like add a product never been sold on Amazon. That's how you go through and then you start with the category. Um, if you sold on Amazon, even, you know, whatever, as long as it, you'd have to see if your account is still able to open back up and get back. But I don't think you, you, you'd have to see worst case. I think you can start a, excuse me, open a new one. The cost of goods on seller board. Okay. So it doesn't sync with inventory lab. But shout out to Jen if she's here or watches this. Um, actually, her podcast is coming out in a couple of weeks where she talks about this. But on Seller Board, you can pull your inventory with all your costs from Inventory Lab. You pull a report. On Seller Board, you go to products, and that's where it has all of your products. And you'll see like the zeros for cost of goods where you need to enter them. On the bottom, you can hit import, and it will have a sheet that template where you fill it out where you put your products and your costs and it matches it by I think your you FN skew. I haven't tried it yet. I did try it one day and it was uh I thought it's gonna be faster than it was and I didn't have time to finish it. So I haven't done it yet. I'm still manually uploading into seller board. But you can do it and upload them all in one instead of sitting there and manually doing it. As soon as I figure it out, I will make the video. So I will sit down and figure it out because it's going to be really helpful to get all of your products, cost of good in there fast instead of manually. Uh, so the generic brand glitch. Okay. I, I will sell on it if I can, but most of the time, if you notice a brand, you should be noticing the brands anyways, because if you have a brand like, uh, Pokemon is always my best example. So if the brand is not Pokemon, then it's another seller created that listing. And so you could get an IP or a counterfeit. Ask me how I know. So the brand always needs to match the brand. So if it's a Mario thing, it needs to be Mario or Nintendo, not Jim Bob's knickknacks. So make sure the brand matches the brand. If it says generic on the brand, I try to list it in store FBM. I don't necessarily list it because you'll get the glitch before you actually can, but you do the process, like sell this product, you click it on your app. When you do that, you'll get the glitch and you'll know or not. I put it back on the shelf. Or if you're like, man, I really want to sell this, it makes a lot of profit, then you can take it home and try and do the work around with Amazon. But um, that is saying, so yes, if I, I can, I have been able to sell on some of them and some, most of them not. So I don't know why, but yeah. So if I can, I will. Um, to get reviews, I'm assuming this is about your seller reviews. So actually, if you go into your manage orders, you'll see all your orders and there's a button there that says request review. Just be careful. I mean, I've never tried it because I just, you don't want bad feedback, right? So be careful because you're just requesting a review. You cannot request any kind of positive review. It's against Amazon and the FTC policies. So you can request reviews, though. 
Um, if you're new, I would just wait. They The reviews really do come. They come in batches. Like I might get like five in a matter of a month and then no, re- no new reviews, no new feedback for like months on end. So um, if you really, really, really want it and you know your product is a great and Amazon shipped it amazing, um, you can request a review right from your managed orders. But you're just requesting. So if it's bad, you're going to get bad reviews. But it doesn't affect your buy box rotation at all. I know everyone wants to get rid of that just launched, but it will happen. I promise. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate it. Purple for melt. Just want to know if there's a reason Amazon will take off the buy box on a listing. So, okay. So that's kind of two different things. So the suppressed buy box, I don't care if it's a suppressed buy box. To me, that means it's selling for high ticket and I'm going to make more money. I don't try to drop my price for that buy box to come down because it will, people will still buy it. I've sold a lot of things with a suppressed buy box. I've bought things with a suppressed buy box. People will still buy it. So I don't worry about that. Um, Amazon will sometimes, I haven't seen them do it really often. They will, um, if a new, if a new, not variation, but like, I don't know, dial hand soap. They made a new dial hand soap and it's like the new one. So you'll even see it sometimes um, if you're shopping on Amazon, there'll be like a little photo of it. It's like right below my Keepa or no, my Rev Seller box. It'll be like a new version of this product exists. Sometimes they'll do that. I don't know why. And then sometimes they'll actually combine. So if there's a bunch of different product pages, they'll combine them all into one ASIN. Um, so that could also happen. I haven't heard it, seen it happen in a while. When I first started, how many days did you go out sourcing? I went sourcing. Um, well, when I first started, I was kind of lazy about it because we took off in the RV and I was like, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to travel. And I was like, Bleh. so once I started really getting into it, I is how I still do it to this day. I will go sourcing all day. I'll do one day from like dusk till dawn or whatever. What do they say? Anyways, it's dark out when I leave and it's dark out when I get back. So I'll go all day sourcing um, and then I'll pack that up for a shipment usually the next day or that weekend. When you're first starting, uh, it can be a lot, especially when you're just seeing restricted and everything. So I would recommend going for a couple hours at a time and seeing like, so I like to go to Walmart early in the morning because once noon hits at Walmart, it's crazy there. But if you go early in the morning, there's less people, it's way better. Um, Some people like going, they're night people. I'm a morning person anyways, but night people, they go like, to walmart you know eight nine ten before they close and there's less people there that time um if you are working full time i didn't have a full-time job when i started but if you're working full time then maybe you go on your lunch break for a week and just do a different store every time like whatever works for you because when you're new it can get even now if i'm having a bad sourcing day it's kind of it's not fun like if you're not finding stuff it's not fun so just break it up into but I would definitely try to get a ship it out, if at all possible, once a week. I Angel asked if I use Seller Amp. Is it the same as Seller Board? They are not the same. I do not use it. I have it. I don't use it. Um, a lot of sellers really like it. It's just another scanning tool. It pulls Keepa in. There's even ways if you want to do online arbitrage with it. I don't know how to do it, but... I know there's ways. So um, it can be a nice tool. I don't think it's all that expensive either, but it's not the same. They do two different things. Mm -hmm. Nadia said she has. Still just launched. Um, If you really, oops. If you really want, I would just go through your manage orders and look for that request review button. but like I said, it's a gamble. That's awesome. Rebez, 90. Listen to the podcast to and from work. That's really funny because I actually heard that people, um, I love podcasts, so that's why I like doing a podcast. But I had heard that people would listen to my YouTube videos on their way to work. And I was like, oh, well, it's basically like a podcast. So. 
I love the podcast. I love talking to other sellers. I learned something myself. So hopefully you also learn from them. And like I said, I would love to have any of you on the podcast. You can email me. You could text me at that number or you can email me and I'll send you a link where we can chat and connect. But yeah. Um, thank you guys so much. I will be back next month for another live here. And I have next week my um, sourcing Oregon, my grocery outlet video is dropping. So definitely check out the podcast. Wednesday is the one with Caitlin where she's talking about how she grew. There's one on there right now with William Soto. He went from zero to 50K in like six months and he did it all with one retailer so he's all doing ra and that is a really fascinating one to listen to so um check that one out and yeah i will be around if you are in my groups or you can text me if you want to connect and get the special that's coming out this weekend so thanks guys happy sourcing